I'm going to uh, uh, speak about structure bioinformatics uh, strategy in the design of antiviral drugs uh, from Nature Product. Um, but first, uh, allow me to introduce my university. Right, so University Science Malaysia. I don't know whether you can see my cursor scrolling here. It's actually located in Penang Island. Right, um, so Penang Island in turn is located in the northwest uh, of uh, Peninsula Malaysia. Right, um, uh, this island is actually a tourist hotspot uh, and a melting pot of culture. That's your finds. Uh, the main attractions of this island is actually food. So I would like to uh, invite you to sample some of our food if you do have uh, time um, to come to Malaysia. Right. <laughs> so uh, a little bit about uh, University of Science Malaysia. Uh, USM is established in 1969 as the second public university in the country. Um, and uh, we are the only university in uh, uh, Malaysia who was accorded uh, accelerated program for excellent status. Um, in terms of population, we have around 34,000 uh, students uh, with 22,000 undergrads and 12,000 postgrads. So there are about uh, 2,000 academic staff teaching or researching in the 24 schools and 18 centers of excellence. So we are also one of the largest uh, research university in uh, Malaysia. So let me come back to the, uh, my talk uh, today. Now, so my talk is about uh, making drugs and especially from natural products. I, I, I don't know whether you uh, have seen this uh, character. He's a Professor Snape of the Harry Potter's world. So his uh, job at um, Hogwarts Academy is uh, to prepare medicine, so yeah, potions and medicine. So I wish uh, making a drug uh, is, uh, is just, uh, you know, um, simply by waving hands um, and saying abracadabra, just like our Professor Snape in Harry Potter's world. Uh, unfortunately, it's not easy. Right, uh, as making drug is actually very resource and time consuming. There are a lot of uh, phases and process that you have to undertake, you know, from your ideations, right, to actually discovery process here. And you have to do the screening and then go back to the exploratory and go all the way to the studies, um, uh, optimization of the compounds and studies on the volunteer, uh, 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 healthy volunteer in the phase one clinical trial. And then you have to study it to the patients. Once you found that uh, the, the drug is quite safe in healthy volunteers, you can introduce it to, to the patients. And also the registration also takes a, a lot of uh, a time. So at the end, you probably spend around uh, US dollar, one billion, one billion US dollars and takes around 10 years to, to make a new drug. But, um, uh, you know, while, while doing that, in 10 years of your uh, researching to find the new drugs, right, you actually generated a lot of data, okay? So, um, so um, drug discovery pipeline can actually be segmented into different phases of informatics from informatics point of view, right? So, um, the first in the disease characterization, where information and knowledge of diseases can be obtained, right, uh, managed and stored in various physiological data, uh, physiological and medical research databases, right? From the disease to cell, yeah, right, uh, where the drug acts, there exists a multitude of uh, potential ta drug targets. And all this information actually can be obtained from the genomic and proteomic databases. Right, so information that we obtain from uh, bioinformatics, right? We can apply computer-aided drug design to it to make new compounds, right? So um, once the target is identified in a bioinformatics, right? Uh, we use uh, different methods of drug design here, and the combinations of uh, um, computer-aided drug design. We have structured bioinformatics. So, so a lot of people actually been using these uh, methods uh, to, to work uh, and to find for, for new drugs. And even at the clinical trials here, you actually generated a lot of uh, uh, data, right? 
data according to the binding assays, data how the patient uh, responds to the treatment, the side effects and so on. So there was a lot of data being generated uh, during drug discovery. Right? <coughs> and um, So um, if I uh, can uh, uh, highlight again, demonstrate again the amount of data just by only one part of it, okay? Right, um, uh, in the bioinformatics parts, okay, human genetic codes actually contain 6 billion letters and this when you divide it into, into um, um, uh, 8 bytes, you actually got uh, one to five uh, gigabytes uh, of data. And in each human being, we have about 40 trillion cells. And this is translated into 60 zettabytes of data. So it's a really, really huge uh, data being generated only at the part of uh, genomics, right? We're not talking about on the clinical trials or you know, even when you're doing a your structured bioinformatics, you still keep on generating a lot of data, right? So, um, and there have been a lot of uh, projects uh, of big data in drug discovery. One example is CREST project undertaken by uh, Japanese uh, uh, scientists and companies, right? So where they actually combine uh, chemical libraries, you know, human genomes uh, information, and then uh, they take also the binding data so when you do the structure-based drug designs, and then when you test, they also take all the bioactivity points data, and in the uh, preclinical trials um, and clinical trials, they take uh, they take the data of uh, uh, gene expression. So they have a lot of uh, data here, and they use this da uh, data to make uh, to improve uh, the drug uh, the discovery and development process. And similarly, there was also um, uh, e-science uh, collaborations uh, between different universities um, in Norway on automated and scalable predictive. Uh, uh, modeling in drug discovery with cloud computing. Right? Um, I just give you a few examples of um, a few uh, open data and open uh, big data. So these are also collaboration uh, between um, various uh, big pharmaceutical companies like Novartis, AstraZeneca, Merck, uh, with academia such as Maastricht uh, University and University of Vienna and also with all other small uh, businesses where they actually shared all this data uh, to, to further improve the drug discovery and development. Right. Um, so uh, all these uh, uh, open data projects are very doable these days because um, there's a lot of public data uh, data sets that can be leveraged to identify new targets, new potential drugs, drug indications, and drug response biomarkers. So typically, uh, you know, uh, in sorry, so in uh, targets, uh, uh, target discovery, you have uh, uh, certain databases like uh, Cancer Genome Atlas, Gene Expression Omnibus, you know, in the uh, NCBI, right? And in um, a drug, uh, you know, to discover drugs, you have a PubChem, for example. And you also, when you have a drug response, you can also uh, look into all these uh, public database available, which you can use, again, this information, go back to the targets, and so on. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, in USM, our lab also developed a database system which can contribute to drug discovery. Our database is slightly different from others as its information is rich uh, on the plants and they use as traditional medicines. So because, um, uh, you know, uh, Malay, Malay people or Chinese people or Indian people, you know, traditionally we actually um, use a lot of uh, plant-based medicines in, uh, uh, to treat uh, ailments and diseases, right? So what, hap uh, what, 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 what we have been doing is, um, you know, when I was very active in Pragma then, is actually to um, develop this database. Uh, we have around 4,000 compounds. These are the structure compounds and also information about where the compounds were isolated and all the scientific studies that, that has been um, um, studied on it. 
right? And we also have a monograph which tells a little bit more about the the uh, the, the plants, the traditional usage, the dosage, the side effects, and it's a very very uh, informative uh, database. And uh, but the best thing is you just click and you can use it uh, for uh, whatever um, uh, things that you want to do. Right, uh, we cater for every needs in natural product chemistry to do such structure search, and also for doing um, uh, structure bioinformatics or rapid in silico screening. Okay. So why are we so interested with uh, natural products? Because natural products, uh, just now I mentioned that um, has been used uh, as source of medicines um, to treat ailments, right, uh, in our culture. But also, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people maybe don't know this, uh, the current drugs in the market, 61% actually either from natural products or inspired by natural products or actually derivatives of that natural products or the mimics of natural products, okay? Um, so nature really gives us a, a lot of information uh, about the structures that can be useful to make as drugs. Right. Um, and also, uh, and, uh, my interest lies to the fact that um, uh, Malaysia itself, just like Australia, is a mega biodiversity country. So it's a it's a nice place to uh, what is it um, store the information about uh, the the rich uh, resources that we have. Right, our forest, for example, contain fifteen thousand five hundred flowering plants, but uh, to date. I think it's less, much less than 400 plants has been investigated, right? Um, and source of drugs not only coming from plants, you know, uh, 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 for your information that uh, a lot more drugs also comes from uh, microbial, uh, you know, like uh, penicillin, for example, come from, uh, uh, from a yeast, yeah? from a mold. Right, so uh, in Nadi, uh, we have a different search uh, modules, uh, including plant glossary, because uh, you know in Malaysia, uh, uh, for certain plants that uh, you know people call it in different names. So we we but the scientific names is uh, is very indicative. It's only one scientific names, but the uh, 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 local names are different in different places of Malaysia. Uh, and we also collaborated with our colleagues in Thailand and Indonesia so that we have a, a complete name of uh, a local uh, plants' names uh, and also the, the, and to map them to their uh, botanical names. However, NADICAM, the database, uh, with a user-friendly interface with uh, which you can do keyword search, structure, substructure search, you know, and you can give a smile or inchy codes, right? Um, and you can do um, uh, Lipinski rules of uh, screening uh, using all this um, um, uh, filter that we put in, right? And we also have uh, retrievals for ethnomedical information so across hundreds of uh, monographs in English and Malay for medicinal plants. And we also have a section for experts and publications, uh, uh, a list of researchers in Malaysia. Uh, we're, we're going to focus on the chemistry part, right? So NADICAM is actually uh, a database which contains uh, information with inform um, chem, chem informatic data, right? Um, uh, and also uh, for nature products. Um, and also uh, is designed to also extract the eth ethnomedical information ac across the herbal monographs that we created before. And the compounds also start, uh, uh, and uh, the compounds stored in the database are classified and cross-referenced by identity and similar similarity groups using smiles and inchy codes. They are, and uh, uh, and our database actually can be downloaded uh, and screened virtually or compared to the internet collections. I'm sorry, I uh, I couldn't uh, do the live demo for it. Uh, but you know it's available on the internet. I think later, later on I have a screenshot where which tells the the link to the to the database, right? Okay. So basically, uh, in the search modules, we have treated each modules as a domain-specific search, 
meaning that searching of a topic uh, for a particular domain can be used uh, you know, to uh, whatever that uh, you are interested. Okay, so the, the um, uh, domains are the code. So we for every compounds, we actually have a code name and the plant name, sorry about that. Chemical name, small formula, IUPAC, international chemical identifier or INCHI code, right? Uh, and uh, for compounds, we also, uh, you know, have information about their weight, log P and chemical structure strength. Okay. Um, so this is how the interface looks like. You can, you know, uh, scroll and find the plant names or, you know, you can search via uh, the chemical name uh, or NADI code search, right? Uh, because when you do the virtual screening, usually we give only the MSC codes. So you probably want to know what this MSC codes refers to, uh, which compounds it refers to. Okay. Right. okay, so this is how it looks like. You can uh, scroll down. So you, ha you have around 400 plants to choose. Okay. And then you can search even by chemical names and you will get this uh, uh, chemical structure or similar compounds uh, that, uh, you know, with the chemical structure, uh, chemical compounds that you're looking at. Okay? And if you don't know the name or you don't know the chemical structure, but uh, you don't know the name, but you have an information about the structure, you can actually search by uh, drawing the chemical structure on <coughs> Java editor. Right. We also put uh, our database uh, on the grid, so you can do the structure bioinformatics, the um, uh, dockings um, uh, on real time on our computer and get the results uh, almost uh, as soon as it's finished uh, on the browser. Okay. So these are some of the examples you can do, you can dock the NADI, right, with the uh, 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 dock or dock. Okay. Uh, but these are the compound you can just scroll it down so it, whether you want to do one by one uh, with uh, all the plants or with everything okay uh, in the database okay so this is also for the options for dock uh, molecular docking this was done uh, years ago with uh, collaborators in osaka university and um, the the results can be displayed uh, immediately and we can uh, uh, capture only the information uh, important information for you so you don't have to uh, see if, uh, see the full results uh, docking results is quite long so we can only, uh, you know with this uh, particular uh, uh, system we can uh, just uh, uh, grab uh, the most important information to be displayed uh, uh, for the researcher right so uh, what do we do with Nadi in our case, right? Uh, we, you know, it's a good thing that we have a database, but uh, what's next? What do you do? Actually, we, we use it a lot to answer our research questions, right? So uh, because uh, Nadi, you can also uh, download it uh, to your own computer, the whole of 4,000 compounds, right? So this is uh, mostly done in our case. Uh, because we want to have a complete controls uh, when we do uh, structure bioinformatics, we do not want to treat the NADI on the grid as a black box. So usually um, we have a workflow where, you know, um, uh, from NADI, right, uh, when we do the uh, uh, marker dockings, right, uh, or uh, do pharmacophore modelings, so we really have to uh, test it uh, in the labs, okay. Because um, in our world, that uh, whatever is predicted must be validated uh, experimentally. So we have a research question such as, uh, can we correlate between traditional use and scientific explanation? Can we identify types of compounds active on the disease targets? Or like, can we identify plants for further extractions and isolation? Or can you, you, we use the uh, active uh, product? active natural products to design simpler and more active molecules. So these are the questions that we use and we use our database uh, to try to answer uh, some of these questions. Okay? Of course, the majority of our computer-aided drug uh, design methods, we use molecule modeling and pharmacophore modeling, but today, uh, and also some a bit of uh, molecular dynamics, but today I'm just going to concentrate on molecular dockings because even then we have a lot of data to share today. Okay? Right. Um, 
Um, our, our question is um, very trivial actually, right? Um, when we want to work for uh, H1N1, um, you know, because uh, blood is a very interesting thing. So one plant can contain around 100 or 200 uh, secondary metabolites, um, you know, and some of them can be active, some of them uh, are not active, majority of them are not active. So can we, you know, instead of just doing a random trial and error in the labs, can we use this NADI to identify plants for further extraction and isolation, right? So this is our, our questions when we were searching for potential H1N1 inhibitors. We want to find plants which are active uh, against uh, H1N1 virus eh? and the influenza virus. So what do we do? We have uh, 3D structures of the chemical compounds from NADI. Right, and then we subjected all of these compounds right into uh, uh, to molecular docking or pharmacoformaldehyde. So you know uh, we selected the heads carefully, right, uh, in terms of how they bind, and then we uh, from there we actually cluster the compounds uh, into the plants that it contain, and then go extra uh, extraction and isolation of the compounds using bio guided uh, principles, right. Um, and then if you want to use the uh, once we found the actives, and if we want to use the active for structure modifications, we can do that. But still, we have to do further tests uh, to validate our results. Okay? Right, so um, we actually um, uh, applied it uh, uh, to uh, work for influenza virus. Okay? So uh, when when I was very active in Pragma then, I, think, uh, I know David when we were Pragma, at that time, there was a, uh, a very um, uh, major outbreak. Eh? There was a lot of uh, uh, outbreaks of H5N1 in uh, you know few countries, uh, such as uh, Republic of Korea, Vietnam, Japan, even Malaysia. We have an outbreak of that. Okay, and uh, interesting thing about uh, this uh, particular virus is if you are infected, this virus is actually. Um, uh, infected the the uh, the birds, the avians, right? The avians. But uh, if you are in contact and if uh, you can be, uh, you if you got transmitted the virus to you and you actually got the flu, right? Uh, uh, more than fifty percent um, are fatal, right? So such as uh, in the Indonesia, for example, out of one hundred and sixty eight uh, confirmed cases of H five N one, one hundred and thirty nine to come to death, right, uh, of this disease, okay. So after H5N1, uh, in 2009, after 2003, in 2009, we saw also uh, major outbreaks of swine flu. And in fact, uh, WHO uh, declared um, um, uh, H5N1 as a, um, a pandemic at that time uh, because of the spreads of the, the, the virus, okay. Uh, in Malaysia also, uh, we reported around 15,000 cases and about 100 deaths due to H1N1. Okay? So I thought there was a, a, a national importance uh, uh, to work on this um, the, vi the virus, uh, to find a, a cure for the virus. Okay? So we actually do the in silico screening utilizing uh, molecular docking techniques. Okay? Right. Um, so this is our, our work. <coughs> The mosquito here. Our workflow, uh, where we actually the ligands that we got, so we actually use the natural products, right? Before we even do the, uh, uh, with our natural products, we really have to do the protocol validations, and we validate it with the uh, uh, inhibitors from National uh, Cancer Institute. So when we screen the NCI compounds, we go back to NCI and request for the for these eight, eight, uh, 58 known inhibitors and we tested it. So when we start to start to, tested it and we found that um, uh, the NCI compounds do give activity uh, according to our predictions, then we uh, applied it to NADI. Okay? Right, so we actually cleaned uh, uh, the um, uh, system uh, for to work on autodoc and the structure for the protein because it's a structure base, so we have to get the structure of the, net, uh, the ligands um, and the structure of the protein. So the structure of the proteins, we actually use it uh, um, using uh, this particular um, uh, structure in the protein data bank uh, encoded by uh, 2HU4. So this is a H5N1 structures, right? 
Okay, uh, so what we do, and then we be, before we go uh, to um, uh, find the compounds, uh, I mean, go to the extractions, right? We actually also apply the Pisky filter for the compounds. We do not want compounds which didn't have um, um, the, uh, the um, criteria or drug-like criteria. So our compounds that we filtered should have a criteria to be, uh, they call it a drug-like criteria. So we uh, we use the Lipinski filter here. Okay? So from our results, we take the active compounds of the NADI. We just take 100 of them because uh, at that time, we just want to do a proof of concept. So we group the compounds according to plants, right? And five plants possess the greatest number of predicted influenza. So we found that the five plants has a lot of number of compounds. So these plants, we actually go for extraction, fractionation, and isolation. And then we went on to validate uh, using our uh, neuromine based assay. Okay. So the, the plants that have showed activity are mangosteen, right? Uh, and uh, uh, this is uh, Momodica charantia. Um, and uh, 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 you know, it is a local name. I can say the local name. Uh, but these are all very, that uh, has been traditionally used uh, in Malaysia. Okay? And also these are very interesting uh, plants, uh, Eurocoma longifolia. Uh, you know, the men used it every day in their coffee, you know, to make them feel uh, more meals, right? Um, so, so these compounds, right, uh, uh, these plants, we actually take it and we test it on the extract. The whole of the extract, and we found that uh, mangosteen especially showed a very high inhibition. And from all these plants, we managed to isolate around uh, uh, 12 compounds. So, you know, this work was done by just an MSc student, so and then it was quite fast. So, we thought that it was quite if you were to do it uh, via um, uh, traditional methods, you probably need a PhD student just for one, one uh, plant to isolate at least 12 compounds, right? So this uh, this um, this work was um, successful just with the MSc students. So this is uh, some um, some of the uh, more detailed results uh, on the validations of the experiments, right? So uh, we are we are pleased to see that you know uh, we are pleased that for every plant that we predicted to have the activity, all of them at the even at the extract level showed some uh, activity. And as we fractions them, they, the fraction also have a high activity. And then when we uh, isolate each and every compound of them, they do show activity except for Eurycoma longifolia. So what we predicted, not necessarily, uh, you know, um, uh, what is it? Not necessarily can be validated for Eurycoma longifolia. So this is, um, this is a very common thing from uh, for plants. Right, the uh, plants actually, uh, you know, the compounds that they make, the secondary metabolites that plants make, actually depend so much on the soil condition, climate conditions, right, and the geographical locations. Um, I mean, the climate especially. So if you, if I have the same plants in Thailand, um, uh, not necessarily it will give me the same compounds in the plants uh, compared to uh, uh, the same plants in Malaysia. Okay, right. So, and also the, uh, the times of where you extract it also will uh, uh, give a slightly, slight variations of the secondary metabolites that it has, right? So our next question is, now we know, now we know that we can do, we can identify plants uh, just using this uh, micro docking, just using this structure bioinformatics, rather than we do, you know, we screen, we chop a lot of plants in the forest and do the uh, trial and errors. We can do systematically now using uh, uh, in silico screening. And then we can use, uh, then uh, we want to answer, we want to find an answer of our second questions. Can we use the active natural product structure to design simpler and more active molecules? So we're in the school pharmacy, we should make more compounds, you know, and compounds which have a better activity all the time, right? So the previous work was done in collaboration with Somi Amaro Group uh, in, um, in uh, University of California, San Diego. Um, 
Um, but what is very interesting when we, we repeat the experiment, right? Um, we actually uh, found the G mangosteno as the in silico haze. Uh, in our reports here, we found that even the compounds that we are managed to isolate, they are different than the one that we predicted. But it's okay because we want to find the starting plants to work on. And we, we are quite pleased actually to see different plants uh, that we managed to isolate. It. One of it is ferulic acid. It didn't appear in our uh, in silico heads, right? But it was isolated in G. mangosteno. And it actually show a very promising uh, IC50 inhibition concentration uh, against uh, the virus at 140 micromolar. Not, not very great, but it has uh, shown some promise, right? So when we dock them, and it does show that a very, uh, uh, you know, high uh, or more, uh, uh, more negative activity, uh, a very favorable uh, uh, free energy of binding. Okay? So we compared the ferulic acid with osatamavir, right? So we found a very interesting, we, we found very interesting um, um, similarity between ferulic acid and osatamavir. This is vanillin, right? So vanillin, you can in, um, interconvert vanillin even in, uh, in the plants or you can interconvert it, uh, in, you can do the conversion of a ferulic acid uh, from vanillin and vice versa, uh, vanillin from ferulic acid. So I just uh, put the uh, vanillin, uh, ferulic acid, and osatamavir, and to see the structure is, is similarity, and try to figure out the new compounds that we want to make. So, uh, so by looking at the structure, we know that um, uh, it has uh, alpha beta saturated bonds, uh, which uh, these uh, features, right? Sorry about that. These features. Uh, is also present in uh, osatamavir. So this feature is actually important uh, to bind to the arginine triad in the uh, neuraminidase structure. And we also have an ether group here. Ether group here, which is uh, comparatively comparable with the, with the isopentoxy group in osatamavir, right? There is some, uh, some uh, hydroxy group right uh, this one is quite a hydrophilic so we we thought that uh, this compound uh, shared enough similarity with the, the uh, osatamavir although this is a quite flat molecule uh, benzoic acid and this is a cyclo uh, uh, fentanyl uh, this is a cyclohexa uh, ring okay right so we thought that uh, with uh, this uh, molecule uh, we going to mimic uh, the osatamavir by retaining the same uh, structure, okay, and adding a, a guanine in the group here so that hopefully it will improve the activities. From that, we have a two molecules, we call it MY7 and MY8, right? And we check the molecular docking whether our molecule has a better activities than the ferulic acid, and it does, it's more negative than the ferulic acid. So, from these two analogs, we design synthesize. Um, uh, and evaluate biological activities of a series of uh, ferulic acid and vanillin derivatives. So this is our assist results, right? So just now, ferulic acid has an uh, activity of 140 micromolar, and now we managed to make uh, a structure uh, which is um, uh, the, the activity, I cannot see here, but it's I think about, about uh, 50 or... Uh, about uh, about 50, about 60 micromolar, so it's better than uh, ferulic acid. Okay, so this actually answer our questions. And we don't stop here. We actually make a, um, a new compounds. Right, we also confirm it on whether this molecule, um, you know, besides um, uh, having activity on the neuraminidase itself, uh, has it? Uh, you know, do they have the ability uh, to halt the the virus? Um, uh, propagation or proliferation. So we uh, studied on the uh, antiviral assays, okay? and uh, we found that um, interestingly that uh, our compounds, ferulic acid compounds, has a very good uh, safety index compared to uh, osatamavir um, uh, or carboxylate. Okay? Uh, we didn't make a compound which is uh, uh, more active than osatamavir, right? 
but um, um, but uh, our uh, compounds is actually safe and it do it does have a a very good uh, activity okay especially my uh, my15 right so this compound has been patented right and we recently published uh, in December last year right um, um, as a potential uh, neuromediate inhibitor okay? so uh, that's uh, actually answer our questions on uh, whether uh, you know the work that we got from the plants and whether the active uh, molecules can be made more active okay? right. uh, and then we have a similar works um, on uh, on uh, neuromedis uh, inhibitor and uh, this time we worked uh, with um, uh, Karunia University. Uh, we have uh, uh, Ms. Sharma who actually spent about six months in, uh, in our lab to synthesize and uh, evaluate uh, the activity. You know our lab is actually uh, very equipped for assays so uh, we actually very open for people so now uh, so we have uh, people from India from uh, from Thailand, from uh, all over Malaysia, and also from Indonesia to come and uh, you know test uh, their molecules on uh, H5 uh, N1 neuromediate inhibition. This uh, neuromediate is not cheap, so you know it's very uh, micro micro liter, micro uh, gram uh, quantity costs us around uh, five thousand ringgit. But you can come here and do the uh, assays for free. Okay? It's uh, it's uh, been established. Right, um, and we uh, applied this um, uh, this uh, workflow uh, to dengue also. So uh, dengue is actually is um, a bad situation. We have a bad situation with dengue in Malaysia. Last year we had one hundred and one uh, one thousand cases with two hundred and thirty deaths. Right, and uh, as of uh, July, we already reached fifty percent of the figure and 122 deaths so our minister is very concerned eh, with uh, with uh, the rise of dengue in malaysia and to make it uh, worse it's like no drug is available right um, uh, if you got dengue you actually got a symptomatic treatment right um, they just gonna give you uh, to make you healthier again uh, but not actually killing the, the virus thing. so again the same workflow where we actually screen the nadi database right we we'll find the top hits and then we get the plants and do the bioassays and uh, in this particular work uh, we actually from the top hits we just take only culinary plants plants that we take every day in our life in Malaysia right uh, like curry leaves like uh, laksa leaf right so these are the plants that we selected right and these two plants showed activity greater than 90% at 200 uh, ppm okay so just to to show you a little bit of uh, the the what is it uh, the picture of the plants. Uh, this is a laksa leaf. This is a curry leaves. You know, today I cook uh, for my family a uh, pilau rice. So we put this inside, right? And this is uh, turmeric. I'm sorry that this is actually written in our our language. Uh, turmeric uh, also have a very high activity, right? Uh, and this is ginger. Uh, showing about 68 activity um, right uh, and this is pandan and also um, uh, citronella right? also have uh, some activity um, for your information our labs also have all these plants already in the fridge we already uh, extracted around two three hundred plant extracts and whenever we do the virtual screening we can just go to the labs and test it you don't have to do the extraction again okay Right, um, so uh, just like what we did in, uh, uh, like we did uh, in H1N1, we tried to isolate the compounds, right? These compounds, uh, it's already uh, known the name. It's, it's not a novel compound, but uh, the compounds which has a new activity, okay? Uh, and also this piece is from uh, curry leaves. So the IC50 of this compound is really low compared to the uh, known inhibitors. Panduratin A was also isolated from natural product. It's been used as a standard control for many studies, but we found our compounds are more active than this uh, particular uh, compound. Okay. Right, we also investigated other plants that have uh, compounds in the virtual screening heads. For example, uh, henna, 
Lausania Inamis, the ones that we put, uh, you know, the Indians or the Malay when we got married, we put it on uh, on our fingers, right? And um, uh, what is this uh, delima? This is uh, pomegranate, okay, pomegranate, right? And also ginger. I don't know this one in English. This one is, uh, I don't know in English, but we use it when people die. We actually put this particular plant. Okay? Right, so we do the, uh, again, the uh, experiments uh, in the lab to see the percentage of inhibition of the fruit extracts. Again, the NS2B, ns 3 purchase in the of the dengue virus. And we found, interestingly, the box of uh, henna showing a very, very, very good IC50. So this is a very potent uh, molecule, uh, potent extracts uh, on uh, dengue. So this is a, a recent finding. So it's interesting that we didn't see with leaves because we leave, uh, we use a lot of leaves uh, for henna, right? But the bulk of it has a good activity against dengue. So what we do, right, uh, with that uh, 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 henna, we actually go back to our database and we found that henna contained this uh, particular molecules called Lawson. We didn't have time to isolate it because at this point it's easier for us to uh, play around with the molecule and synthesize it in the lab, right? Right, so we actually make a new compounds from, uh, from Lawson's, right? And the compound also showed a very good uh, activity. In fact, one of it actually showed uh, a nanomolar activity uh, in uh, in the in the lab. Okay, so we haven't yet tested it on the real virus, but we are hoping. It. So uh, you know, the last one, right? Uh, SH8 is actually giving a nanomolar activity, 0 0.006 uh, micromolar. Okay? So the less uh, amount of concentration that you use uh, to to kill a virus, the better it is. Okay. I mean, the more potent the compound is. So I'm, I'm at the end of my, my talk now. So we actually have tried to, to apply uh, structured bioinformatics to projects that have national or local relevance. And uh, in many cases, we choose to work on natural products or to modify the natural products as nature gives us many phenomena to be observed and to research. And uh, we also use uh, a lot of different technologies. I'm just talking about... Um, about uh, computer aided drug design, structure bioinformatics, we also amenable to high throughput screenings, right? So any other technologies to make a successful drug discovery, and we also help to generate new data. Uh, for example, you see that we have a lot of binding data, you know, activity data, and this data can be can be made into open data, and we can develop database, right, uh, from this project. Uh, that can contribute to another big data project because a lot of um, uh, big data project on database uh, on uh, natural uh, on uh, drug discovery they don't use natural product they use a chemicals just any chemical space but we we give from even the, the sources of the natural products okay? so with that uh, i would like to thank you for listening this is an old picture um, you know uh, but at least most of my students are here right uh, thank you very much i hope i know that you guys are you know from uh, uh, computer science background, but I do hope that you can uh, get a little bit of message what I'm trying uh, to say today. Thank you very much.